Over the course of these online services, we have tried from time to time to include opportunities to gain some new or different perspective on the St. Andrew's Church community, whether in the form of conversations with members of the congregation or insights into the history of individuals who have been part of our community, or last week, some exploration of the stories behind the stonework and architecture on the outside of the building. This week, for something different, we thought we might offer a glimpse of the church that few have actually seen. To that end, after the Out of the Cold breakfast this past Tuesday morning, Mark Roberts and I climbed to the top of the West Tower to get some pictures, but also to put back up the flagpole that flies the Saltire flag, which was quite tattered and needed to be replaced. And so we climbed. It is a fairly steep climb to get up the West Tower, up a series of stairs and ladders, and not a climb that is wise to take while wearing one's Sunday best, but the view from the top is actually quite wonderful. It's always interesting to ponder that when the church was built, this very tower would have been one of the highest points in the immediate vicinity around it. Such is certainly not the case anymore, but the view is pretty great. And we should all be thankful that members of our community, particularly in the Board of Managers, have worked so hard to maintain this amazing structure right in the heart of Toronto. But we did not just come up for pictures. We also came up to raise the flagpole on which the new flag will fly. The saltire will fly again. So a bit about the saltire. The saltire is the name for the X-shaped cross that is typically associated with the legends and traditions connected with St. Andrew, after whom our congregation is named. According to the Gospel accounts, Andrew was the brother of Peter, and at least according to the Gospel of John, was the individual who introduced Peter to Jesus. In John chapter 1, shortly after Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist in the Jordan River, we read, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. Over the course of time, this X-shaped cross has become so associated with Andrew that it is often simply referred to as the cross of St. Andrew in spite of the fact that its proper name is a saltire. So why is the saltire so closely associated with the stories and legends of Andrew? Well, according to tradition, Andrew was crucified in about the year 60 AD in Patras, Greece. Although crucifixion was a somewhat commonly practiced form of execution in the Roman Empire, and though saltires were one of the ways that crosses were sometimes erected, the story goes that Andrew requested that he be crucified on an X-shaped cross, since he did not feel worthy to be crucified in the same way as Jesus had been. It is, of course, impossible to actually know such details for certain, but it is intriguing that such stories and traditions and legends grew up around many of the famous figures of faith in order to provide inspiration and an example to those of us in later generations. In any case, in Christian history, the saltire has become almost synonymous with the life and experience of Andrew, reminding us of his devotion to Christ, even to the point of death. And it can be good for us to see that there are many saltires in St. Andrew's, quite apart from the flag that flies from its highest tower. But back to the flag. If we were to ask most people what this flag symbolizes, most people would probably mention that it's the flag of Scotland, and assume that the connection is because St. Andrew's was established as a Church of Scotland congregation, which it was. But where did the connection in Scotland come from, and why a white cross on a blue background? Well, there's a famous story that recounts an incident that took place during a battle in approximately 832 AD between the Picts, led by Angus McFergus, along with a contingent of Scots, and a group of the Angles and Saxons, led by a king named Athelstan. The Picts and Scots were outnumbered in the conflict, as the story goes, and Angus was rather fervently praying for some divine help when he looked up into the sky and saw an X-shaped cross formed by the clouds. His confidence was bolstered by that vision, which in turn helped in his unexpected victory. As a result, Angus promised that St. Andrew, whose cross had appeared to him in that moment of crisis, reminding him of God's presence with him, 
would become the patron saint of Scotland. Again, the historical accuracy of the story can be questioned, but it was that legend of a white cross appearing in the otherwise blue sky over Angus's head that was retold many centuries later by Walter Bauer and George Buchanan, and that is likely the basis for the white striped cross on the blue sky background. But the message at the heart of this old legend and of the way that the story was recounted by Bauer and Buchanan serves to remind us of an important truth even today. Not only are we to draw from it a call to draw inspiration from the faithfulness that Andrew demonstrated, a willingness to invite others to come to Christ, as he demonstrated with his own brother Peter, a willingness to give our lives for the sake of Christ in humility, but also, as Angus McFergus learned, that even in the midst of great conflict and crisis, Angus's prayers led him to be reminded that God was still with him, even in that difficult time. By committing his needs to God in prayer and looking up, even when all seemed lost, his hope was renewed by that reminder of God's continued presence with him. And perhaps, hopefully, those who walk past the church and look up at this white cross against the blue sky might remember God's gracious presence with them as well, even in the midst of life's challenges and difficulties, and find that same hope renewed once again. <laughs>